let's talk about Prince Harry and the state of things, so to speak. Since the coronation and that infamous car chase through New York, various reports have suggested that the cracks are beginning to appear. Last week, we brought to you fresh news that Harry had been staying at the San Vicente bungalows to take a break from his family, despite owning a sprawling Montecito property together with Guesthouse. And this week, those rumours are intensifying that all is not well. We will cover, cover them in detail with our panel shortly, but let's just say apparently the divorce lawyers have been contacted. Insofar as Harry is concerned, it looks as though he's getting to the fork in the road. Now, Harry has always been affable. He was the cheeky rogue of the royal family, and while he occasionally found himself embroiled in some juvenile scandal or other, there was always something endearing about him. You couldn't quite help but love him. This is what I think of when I think of Harry. She's our boss. She's the head of the armed forces, you know. This is not unusual for her. It's an Olympic year, four years after she jumped out of a helicopter with a parachute. She's 90 years old, but she gave me that look as if to say, 90 years, and no one ever asks me to do these fun things. So it was like, OK, let's do this. Do you know what I mean? So, no, it was, it was, it was great. Oh, really? <laughs> Please. Boom. Just tell me a little bit about your role as uncle. Have you taught them to be cheeky? Because no, you were quite no. cheeky in photographs, we remember, when you were their age. <laughs> Look, kids are cheeky, naturally. And while his early relationship with Meghan Markle was met positively, it all started to head in the wrong direction shortly after they were married. Five years down the track, and apart from producing two absolutely gorgeous children, they've achieved very little of positive note. Instead, they've managed to alienate, annoy, moralise and bore with unparalleled in intensity and consistency. And on this show, we often talk about what do the Sussexes do after they've finished spilling the beans on being part of the royal family. And with the coronation over and Harry only making a brief appearance, query how the Sussexes maintain their relevancy and their commercial value. Their platform and commentary will look increasingly forced the less the Sussexes are actually connected to the royal family. And so, with time, the Montecito mansion looks increasingly like a straw house. And it raises multiple questions. Where do the Sussexes go to from here? How does Harry reconcile with his family? How does he give purpose to his life going forward? And how does he, incre uh, how does he address this nearing fork in the road? Because if you look at who gave up the most to be in this relationship, it's pretty clear Harry is the one in need of a strategy.